Hi, this is a product review for the Tiva C-Series development board. It's got the TM4C129X processor on there. This is the board. I got two, actually I got three USB keys with it. Eight, eight gig keys. Not sure why I got three. I thought only one was supposed to come in the kit. You get three USB cables with it. This handy uh, coiled Ethernet cable. Which, whatever. And this uh, board, of course, and this is what you're interested in. Um, a quick tour. You have a resistive LCD screen here. Lots of headers uh, with your jumpers on there to connect certain signals. So if you want your signals to go somewhere else, you just pull the headers off and wire it up how you like. Lots of oscilloscope test uh, points here. And a full speaker here, not just a buzzer. Uh, micro SD. There's a NAND flash on there. There's Ethernet, USB. This thing's got all kinds of stuff. Um, and on the back side, it's got these uh, nice rubber feet. These are by far like some of the best rubber feet because the board actually doesn't slide when you have it on the table. So if you've worked with uh, embedded designs before, you have a cable, you have something plugged in and it's creating a torque on your board or a moment. Uh, it tends to slide and move around. This one doesn't happen like that because the feet are nice. For my an, uh, original, original design, I decided let's do something easy and see how long it takes to do something easy. So I said, well, let's count pulses. You know, take an optical encoder on a motor, spin the motor around, count how many times the motor has spun. You know, figure out its RPM. So at about five hours in, including the installation time for the software and all the libraries and everything like that, I had the um, counter running, but it wasn't uh, counting from like a general purpose input output pin or GPIO, it was counting from uh, interrupt driven counting. So then I decided, well, I need to um, at least learn how to read a pin or something like that in order to say it's like a counter. And this is where I had my first trouble. How do you read or write to a GPI output? It took a lot longer than it should have. And it was uh, pretty annoying, actually. I went into uh, the blinking program, which is the program that blinks the LED. And they have a, um, a GPI port writing there because they have to write to the port that of course drives the LED. And the way they do it is they have a, a name that they map to an address location, right? Memory mapped I.O., right? So you think, okay, that's how you do it. And then you do some more reading and more reading and you find out, no, that's not how you should do it. There are libraries that come with this thing that make it easier for you to do GPIO reading and writing. So I found it really annoying that Texas Instruments gave away an example program that teaches you the non-conventional way to read that GPIO or write, sorry. And it was, it was like I said, extremely annoying. After that, um, when I finally figured out how to read the GPIO, um, from the very beginning I was quite frustrated at the fact that I couldn't find an API. Right? Like this thing has drivers, it has libraries, it's a microcontroller, right? If you want to program it, you need to know what the API is like. I can never find one. I read the user guide. I read the getting started guides. No mention of an API. So I started to go through all the documentation. Excuse me. And I found one called the uh, Texas Instruments, what was it called? Peripheral Driver Library. And I started scrolling through it and I thought, well, this is the API. What's going on here? They called it something else. I don't know why they called it something else. It's extremely annoying that they called it something else, but it's what they did. And even if they have a good reason for calling it something else, they should at least hint or allude to the fact that this is what other people would call the API. This board is not for a beginner. All right? You'll, if you're a beginner and you buy this board, you're going to find it extremely frustrating and it's overwhelming. The data sheet for the microcontroller unit alone is over 2,000 pages just for the microcontroller. Doesn't include 
the LCD, or any of the other stuff on here. Just the microcontroller. After I did the pulse counting and I was in far enough, I thought, okay, I need to give this another chance because I'm new to this um, ARM architecture. I'm used to 8051. So we need to give it another shot because it left sort of a foul taste in my mouth. I was disappointed that things were going the way they were. So I thought, hey, I've got a touch screen here. Let's design a um, sort of like a function generator, right? You know, you just enter the parameters on the touch screen, do up a DAC, do all your stuff like that, make a neat little function generator. Easy project. Well, you'd be surprised to find out there's not a single DAC on this entire board. And that's a bummer. That sucked. Okay? I couldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. And I dug and dug and dug and dug. And I thought, okay, maybe they have a good reason for not having a DAC. Although, dev kits should probably have a DAC. And I looked in the microcontroller and I found out, oh, they have uh, three, I think three comparators built into the microcontroller. And I thought, well... How are you going to set your comparison level? You kind of have to have a DAC. So I did some more reading and I found out, sure enough, you can set the reference level, but it's shared amongst all three DACs, which is another bummer. So I think they really should have included a DAC on this. You could argue against it, but I really think they should have. And lastly, I did some um, connections of... Uh, a peripheral. I had another LCD. I plugged it in, saw just to see if I could uh, hook up other things to the board and drive them. Worked out okay. So as a summary for this product, it's okay. It's not fantastic, and I'm disappointed myself. Um, it doesn't. It's not like it's poor or bad. It's just I expect more from TI. You know, TI has a very good name. And they have a good name because they usually deliver stellar products. I have put a lot of TI's um, components <laughs> through unimaginable things. Wired up op amps backwards with power supplies and they still worked. Did unmentionable things to regulators, they still worked. I used a 400 megahertz analog to digital converter and the things like a tank, it would overheat, shut down. It's awesome. But this is not awesome. It's just okay. So take that how you will.